Hello, hello. Good morning. Happy Saturday, August 12th. Hope you're well. We are well. Um, thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday or whenever you happen to be viewing this. Here I am standing next to my sink in my kitchen, and there goes Grandmother Clock chiming the hour. Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I talk about how I lost 97.4 pounds after starting the ketogenic protocol and how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. For those of you who don't know, I have been following the protocol for now over nine and a half years. Um, I was obese and morbidly obese for 30 years from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. If you go to my blog, link below, you can see some photographs from not even my heaviest. Um, it was... Uh, it took a long time for me to be able to look at those photographs. Anywho, I'd given up on losing weight. I had tried lots of things, including low carb before. Um, I knew low carb worked for me since 1977, but I'd given up on losing weight and I just didn't want to take insulin for type two diabetes. I Googled how to not take insulin for type two diabetes, came across the page four protocol and link below page four, although you don't even need a food list. Page four is a food list. It's a list of Non-starchy, excuse me, fatty sources of protein. Just eat the fat that comes with the with the meat or chicken or egg. Eat the fat that comes with it. Non-starchy vegetables in limited amounts. Full fat dairy in limited amounts. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Ooh, challenging. Stop eating when you've had enough. Also challenging. And then I've added be patient and persevere. That's the protocol. Keep your carbs low. You quit burning sugar. Glucose as your main source of fuel, your body flips over to burning ketone bodies or fat for fuel, and it's great. So if you don't overeat and you're burning fat for fuel and you're not adding a lot of added dietary fat, this is not, you know, put a, not eat a stick of butter. This is not put a bunch of oil in your coffee. This is not, you know, have fat bombs. Eat the fat that comes with the protein. And don't worry about added fat. This is not a high fat diet. It's just not a low fat diet. Okie dokie. Now, today's topic, and I apologize in advance to anyone who really, really, really wants to believe that there are food products that are keto just because the label says. First of all, packaged food that has the word keto on it, if it's packaged, it's almost certainly not low in carbs. We've seen this with, you know, this went through paleo as well. I always do chuckle. I've said this many times. I chuckle when I would chuckle when I'd be shopping and there at the end cap at Costco would be paleo pancake mix. You know, paleo meant paleolithic. Cave people. Do we think that during paleolithic times, People were eating pancakes? No. So anywho, now the keto is the thing. It's on everything. It's a non-regulated term. It's not even a real word. Keto. It's short for ketogenic. Our bodies are ketogenic, not our food. My friend Amy Berger coined that. <laughs> Foods are not ketogenic. Our bodies are ketogenic, meaning it's in a state of burning fat for fuel. So first trickled in, you know, the keto trail mix. So if on page four, there are fatty sources of protein and limited amount of non-starchy vegetables and limited amounts of full fat dairy, there are no nuts, no grains, no seeds. Um, the copyrighted page four below is copyrighted because there were so many bootleg copies of it out there, which said, oh, well, this sounds good, but I like quinoa. So let's put quinoa on page four and I'll put it on Pinterest. Or nuts have to be good for you. That's what they say. So let's put some on there. And of course, fruit's good. So eat, do what works for you. Uh, you know, there are many paths to get to the same destination. But if, if you want to eat fruit and nuts and seeds and peanut butter, and, you know, rice, fine, do it. If it works for you, great. Just don't say that it, you're following the ketogenic protocol. It's a very low carbohydrate, not a kind of low carb. It's a very low carb protocol. 20 grams or fewer a day of total carbs, not net. Bringing me to the next point. 
packaged foods, if a if a product is shouting out about its net carbs, number of net carbs, you can rest assured that it is quite high in total carbs. This protocol follows total carbs, not net carbs. Net carbs just means more carbs. Food manufacturers gotten the, you know, they they figured they had license to subtract fiber grams and grams of sugar alcohols from the total carbohydrate count. There's no there's no good science about that. It's just more carbs. So if it says net carbs on the front, flip over the package and look the total carbs per serving and then pay attention to what a serving is. Some of us think, you know, I used to back in my <laughs> not so good, good old days, a serving of Oreos was the entire sleeve. It was the row of Oreos, right? That was a serving. I knew it wasn't, but that's kind of how I approached it. Look at serving size. But now lately, bold as brass. <laughs> I, I, I hear about things from people. I don't go searching this out. There is a product, a food manufacturer, a farm that is touting their bag of low-carb potatoes. Let that sink in. Low-carb potatoes. I don't begrudge anyone trying to make a living. Just don't, don't, don't know. If it's pota- if the ingredient is potato, it's not low-carb. Potato is like super starchy, super glucosey. Okay, so that was the first one. Then someone kindly uh, messaged me that King Arthur Flour has, is now selling, this is the way they label it, Keto Pizza Flour. Y'all, it's flour. I went and looked at the site. Yeah, it talks about net carbs per serving on the front of the package. It's like two net carbs or something like that or four. I don't remember what it was. I looked at the label on screen on the back. It's 14 grams of carbohydrate per serving, a serving being one quarter cup. Y'all don't fall for this. Now, be honest with yourself. If you want to believe it because you want to believe it because you want to eat potatoes, have at it. But don't then come back and tell your friends in three months, keto doesn't work. I tried it. I tried those low carb potatoes. It just doesn't work. Don't blame keto for what the processed, packaged, lying food labels did. Don't blame keto for what the net carbs did. Don't blame keto for what the cheat meal did. Uh, And hopefully people will be chiming in here of their own experience. But really, we do have to employ some common sense. We have to be responsible for our level of gullibility. Sorry. Really? Low-carb potatoes? Do we think that there is keto pizza flour? It's flour. It's wheat. Wheat's not on page four. Neither is barley or rice or quinoa or almonds or almond flour. And and let's be bru- let's just be blunt. I'll be blunt as a spoon. Telling ourselves that we... We need these things to because we can't resist the sensation of eating a keto. I've seen keto brownie mix. Come on. Keto cereal. If you compare some of the packaging on things that say keto-friendly cereal, and then you pick up a box of plain Cheerios, carbs, total carbs, just about the same. Don't be fooled. Or be fooled. But don't blame keto. Don't blame the protocol. But to say that we can't resist cereal or brownies or rice or quinoa is really selling ourselves short. Okay, my t-shirt. I'm stronger than a cookie. Think of all the things you've been through in your life. I don't care how old you are right now. If you're hearing my voice, you've, you've been through something. Whether it's, you know, heartbreak or bankruptcy or loss of loved ones or thankless children or 
being in overdraft every month or your best friend knows all your secrets and it turns out they're not your best friend anymore. We've been through things, medical diagnoses. You know, I've been diagnosed and treated for cancer three times over my life. The first time when I was pregnant with our third child. And I would tell myself, yeah, after that, I mean, so, so then a few years later, another cancer, another more cancer again. And I made it through that and the rest of life. I mean, you don't have to have cancer to have been through some things. Just getting through the day sometimes is challenging. But I would tell myself, oh, I can't. I'm, I'm powerless against tortilla chips. What? What? I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty strong-willed. I'm pretty ornery, actually. But I told myself that. You know why? Because I really like tortilla chips and I wanted to eat them. So I told myself I was powerless against them so that I didn't have to be responsible for eating them. Same thing with, you know, I'm, I ha- it's, I'm, it, I, food is irresistible. Well, no, it's not. Someone put a seven-layer chocolate cake in front of you. And you would say, oh, it's chocolate cake. It's irresistible to me. And then they put down a stack of $50,000 in cash tax-free and said, just don't eat that cake. All of a sudden, the cake becomes resistible. So let's not tell ourselves this. Don't fall for the fake. They are fake products. Make no mistake about it. I challenge you next time you're in the store. Good carbs, or if a product is touting its protein, this is not a high protein diet either. We need sufficient protein, and that can be different for lots of people. And if you eat fatty sources of protein, you're going to get protein. Don't eat, you know, if you're not hungry, it's fine. Stop eating when you've had enough. You've had enough. Nature will work it out. How do we think we evolved for the last 70 million years to grow, you know, taller and stronger and smarter and faster? generation over generation, when no one was telling us how much to eat, how did they, how did our ancestors figure it out? They listened to their bodies. There's no, there's no keto pizza flour. We might want there to be, but there isn't. There, you know, even cauliflower crust pizza, keep in mind, non-starchy vegetables of which cauliflower is one, limited to about a cup a day before cooked. Think about, that's about that much, about the size of your fist of cauliflower before it's cooked. Exactly how much pizza crust are you going to be able to get out of that? That sounds full of ourselves. Plus, there are other fillers and stabilizers in these pizza crusts. How about you just eat the cheese and the pepperoni? That's good. You don't need a crust. You need a spoon. They're fake foods. They are not obligated to tell you the truth because it's a non-regulated term. Same thing with supplements. There are no keto supplements. My husband and I, you do what works for you. We take no medications. We take slow-release magnesium each day because much of the population on low-carb or not is deficient in magnesium and to save off muscle cramps. And we take a teaspoon each of cod liver oil a day. That's it. No multivitamin. No extra vitamin X, Y, Z, no electrolytes, no so-and-so. You do what works for you. This works for us. But I promise you, I, there's, uh, I've seen a label for keto water marketed by a personality. Okay. Hashtag Casey's pink drink before I forget. I get asked every time. Tall tumbler full of ice. Diet tonic water, a splash of diet, cranberry, and a squeeze of lime. That having been said, you don't need to buy a product to be 100% successful of this. Buy whole foods, fatty sources of protein, a bit of dairy, a bit of non-starchy vegetables and leafy greens. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop eating when you've had enough. And then get on with living your life. I highly suggest stop scrolling photos and videos of food. If you're trying to get the food monkey off your back, quit looking at food. If you're trying to lay off alcohol, don't go to bartending sites and look at all the cocktails. Okay. 
I'm very luxury today, aren't I? That having been said about you don't have to buy one thing. It's not what you do put in your mouth that does the trick. It's what you don't put in your mouth, carbs, that does the trick. I will happily, commercial interruption, sell you a t-shirt all day long. You can see links to my products below. There's t-shirts and mugs and a teddy bear and aprons and stickers. Also, uh, thank you for subscribing and the thumbs up. That helps my channel greatly and I appreciate it. And I have a private Patreon support group on Patreon, link below. Some of the patrons I know are here. And for that, you get a handful of patron-only live streams just like this, but on Crowdcast and formats a little bit different, several a month. And weekday video snippets from me, topics often suggested by patrons. There is a free trial you can try, seven-day free trial. If you like it, you can stay. If it's not your cup of tea, no harm, no foul, no bad feelings. And I think, is that it? No, thumbs up, subscribe. Oh, green book. Green book. I enjoyed putting this together a couple years ago. You can get this on Amazon. If you go to my blog, there's a link to it. Um, it's a it's full of, it's a habit tracker and a mood tracker and quotes and coloring pages and then sayings. Every month has a saying. And this one I thought, this is from Thomas Edison. Quote, many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Now, I can say that was true for me. I did low carb several times, and I was this close to having it locked in, and I gave up. For I, I, I made the excuse that life came at me. This thing happened. And, of course, my only, well, what am I to do with that problem? Food will fix it. No. You know, the cancer, the, the second cancer diagnosis, I had lost about 30 pounds, I think, just on the induction period of Atkins, which this is, keto is this. And I had the diagnosis, and that afternoon, I ate bagels with cream cheese, low-fat cream cheese. And I immediately put the weight back on, and guess what? I still had cancer. If hunger is not the problem, food is not the solution. Now, all of that said, I'm going to turn my attention to you lovely folks who are here in attendance. I will just take comments and questions um, as I see them. And if you can ask me anything and you can share your story. Amy Thies, in Germany, there are high protein foods, but no keto foods. And of course, chicken thigh is a high protein food. Keto Simple, good morning from Indianapolis, Indiana. Good morning. Our weekly video Bible study Purple Heart, thank you, Scott. Sherry Sullivan, Red Heart, Heather Silva, your hair looks fantastic. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Can I tell you how much? I, I, I have an issue about my hair. Thank you for saying so. I'm distracted by my hair. It's gotten to the point where our um, younger son, when he communicates, oh, by the way, mommy hair looks great. <laughs> he just right out says that, whether he's looking at me or not. Uh, Kelly Hackle, good morning from Detroit. Cheryl, Cheryl Sullivan, Casey, what do you think about unsweetened nut pods? I don't know what those are. Uh, what are the car carbs? I don't know what those are. Are they something you put in your coffee? If they're very low in carbs and it's one serving and, and you like it, go for it. Olivia Richards, been watching your lives for a while now. Just kept going back to the ice cream and cheesecake. Finally decided I'm sick of being fat. 16 days ago, I cut out all sweets and eat mostly meats. Lost 10 pounds. There you go. Yeah, we want to eat delicious food. Fortunately, the food that we eat around here is delicious. If I if I if the fairy carp mother came down and tapped my noggin with with a wand and said, "Oh, now you can eat all the food that you really like and you won't gain any weight and you won't your blood pressure and your blood sugar will will not be impacted. You'll be healthy and happy." Yes, I would eat that food. But I can't. You know, I can't. You know, if the if the fairy credit card mother tapped our heads and said, you can go out and spend all the money using all the plastic that you want and you never have to pay any of it back. Maybe we would do that, but that we can't do that either. Well, we can, but then we lose our credit cards and then we have to declare bankruptcy. Good for you, Olivia, writes Amy. I have 10 pounds to lose again. 
uh, I'm not frustrated because I don't spend that much time thinking about it. And it's, it doesn't, it's not part of my life. But I have to shake my head when I hear or read people in the medical community and the research community saying, well, yes, keto, very low carb is effective. It what was blood sugar. By the way, if you are currently taking insulin or an injectable for blood glucose, you must do this under supervision because you lay off the carbs and it essentially makes the insulin too strong because your blood sugar is going to drop because you're not eating carbs. And then you, that can be a problem. Hypoglycemia is quite dangerous. Uh, for those who, who care, every Saturday morning, I measure my blood glucose and my ketones because I'm keeping a chart. I'll probably stop in a couple of months doing that. I'm always in ketosis. This morning, my glucose was 74. My ketones were 1.1, which is on the low side for me. But that's okay. You're in ketosis. So people say, well, it's very effective. And it does this. But people can't sustain it. Well, says you says you, you know what's not sustainable? Type 2 diabetes. It leads to amputations and blindness and kidney failure and death. But also, forget about the, the do they say low fat's not sustainable? Move more, eat less? Did they say that's not sustainable? Because I tried it, and it was difficult for me to sustain. I'd had the summer of the triathlons. I moved a lot. My big fat body, I moved it. And I followed the food pyramid, had information from a nutritionist, got 60% of my calories as prescribed from carbohydrate and 5% from fat and the rest from protein. And I lost over the course of five months or six months, 11 pounds. I was sore all the time and I was hungry all the time. And I've been in a pretty bad mood. Most of the time. So you know, they never said for, for 40 years, oh, that's un unsustainable. But forget about food. What doctor would say, oh, my gosh, you gave up smoking. Your emphysema symptoms have resolved. Your COPD symptoms have gotten better. You're not coughing so much. Congratulations. But, you know, giving up smoking is not sustainable. Oh, you gave up alcohol and you're no longer waking up in places you don't know where, how you got there. You're, you're no longer having blackouts. Good for you for giving up alcohol six months ago, but you know, it's really not sustainable. I think the people who say it's not sustainable, including medical providers, are people who think they couldn't sustain it because you know why they don't want to, because you know why they like pretzels and ice cream. Of course, it's sustainable. I'm not a strong-willed person. I'm an ornery person, and I'm headstrong, but I'm not, I don't have willpower. I just, was the right time for me to do this because I don't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. And the next time I ate food, I laid off the carbs, and my mood got better, and my joint pain resolved, and I felt like I'd won the golden ticket, and I just kept it up. And my appetite was suppressed and I no longer have intrusive thoughts of food and I don't have cravings, cravings. What, what, what do you do if you have a craving? Well, as many of you will have heard, cravings are like our stray cat, Luna, who showed up at our door late Luna. She died a couple of years ago. She showed up one November morning at our side door. She was a little kitten looking inside. We have a 15 light door and the lowest one's here. Gave her a little bit of milk and a little bit of food. And guess what happens when you give a stray cat food? It comes back. So Luna was our side door cat for 17 years. If you have a craving, don't feed it if you don't want it to come back. Oh, I love, I love it when, um, heaven forbid if there's no bacon in my house. I'm missing refried, refried beans and red beans and rice, but I'm not tempted. Can I tell you something? My husband, my lovely mate is from Columbia, South America. Rice and beans, an absolute staple. Patacones. Um, yuca. Potatoes. And he never had a weight problem or a health issue, really. He did this out of logic. He saw what was going on with me. He heard the same medical lectures I was listening to. 
and he just stopped. And if he can do it, and I'm talking culturally, then you can do it. If I can do it, and I'm just talking obesity, self-indulgent, depressed person, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Heather Silver, Sil oh, Grace Custom Trim. It drives me crazy when the, quote, keto influencers show a grocery haul or a, quote, keto box. If it comes in a box or bag, it is most likely not keto. Eat real food. Follow the protocol. And, Gray, you are welcome to share your story if you wish. Um, it's one worth bragging about. Heather Silver writes, Silva writes, searching for my next sugar fit. 24 7 is not sustainable. Kelly Hackle writes, I can say I'm not hungry, but when I but when I get as calorie count counting calories, I was starving. Yeah. You don't we don't count calories on this, although calories ultimately count. You can be in ketosis, burning fat for fuel, not doing a lot of added dietary fat, just eating perfectly acceptable page four foods, fatty sources of protein, and not only not lose weight, you can gain weight. You know, uh, if you eat a 96 ounce ribeye, you're probably going to gain weight, even if that's the only thing you eat, because that's six pounds of ribeye. The old 96 are like in the great outdoors movie. Cheryl Sullivan, nut pods, coffee cream are made from almonds and coconut. You do what you want. Just figure out what works for you. And if it doesn't lead to a downfall, we just use heavy cream. measured. We use heavy whipping cream, two teaspoons per mug. And cream is limited to about, I think it's two tablespoons a day. Thea DH, guess I'm lucky. I eat sugars and grains, some veggies. My arthritis flares up terribly. Not hurting is the best five years now. Okay. Well, I'm not sure why you're here. I'm, I'm good if you eat sugar. So this is, you're not following the ketogenic protocol. I guess I'm lucky. I eat sugars and grains, some veggies. My arthritis flares up terribly. Okay, I'm not sure how to follow that. But, you know, good for you. Of. Okay. If. Okay. <laughs> the is, is, uh. Oh, if. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I miss the word if. I guess I'm lucky. If I eat sugars and grains, some veggies, my arthritis flares up terribly. Not hurting is the best. Thea, I apologize for misreading that message. Um, yes, some people, it's almost like a canary in a coal mine. I've heard from people who, oh, I was doing great. And then, you know, I had some pretzels and my joints started hurting again. Same thing with emergency asthma inhalers. People will be fine. They eat you know, well, I fell off the wagon and I ate, you know, the bread that came with the meal and they hit their emergency inhaler. For me, I just blow up. I would blow up like a puffer fish. I just, I remember how I was then. I don't know how I functioned to tell you the truth. Judy Tucker's not here. I don't think from Hopkinton, Iowa. She's a farmer. She's lost 150 pounds and she was a farmer. How are you a farmer 150 pounds ago? So again, apologies, Thea. Um, all right, I am going um, to start to wind down. I do want to remind people, do what works for you. But, but most people who are listening to my channel, the other things didn't work or haven't worked or aren't working. Keep in mind, I had several at-bats at this. It's not like I was, oh, one day I think I'll just do... It wasn't even called keto then. It was no starch, no sugar, or low carb, high fat, or LCHF, or the Banting diet, as it's known in South Africa, and um, in a, perhaps in Australia as well. And that's from Doctor uh, from William Banting from 1863. He was an undertaker. He wrote a book, a treatise on corpulence, and guess what it was? He was fat. He had trouble walking up and down stairs. He laid off carbs. All of this is based pretty much on that same thing. It's nothing new. But I needed to be in the right place in my brain. And I had to quit telling myself why I couldn't do it. 
Let's not remind ourselves why we can't do something. Let's how about we just figure out that we can and then do it. Okay, Kelly Hackle writes, Re well, reducing carbs and sugar has eliminated my lower back pain. Excellent. And Cheryl Sullivan, thank you, Casey. You are such an inspiration. I'm going back to heavy cream. It's one of the delights. Grace Custom Trim, thank you uh, for chiming in. Uh, writes, anyone can do this. We are not special in any way. Stick to the protocol. I assume he means you and me, right? I'd love to be lumped in with you, Gray. Mr. Gray. Um, I can and I will. Oh, that's one of my t-shirts and mugs. It's just I C and I W. I can and I will. Don't let other people tell you what you can't do, for heaven's sake. Oh, thank you, Judy. You are fantastic as always. What a nice note on which to end. Thanks a lot. Keep it simple. Tell yourself, you know, don't go back to what you know has not worked. We know that didn't work, so let's not do that again. If I can do this, you can do this. I had given up on my, on weight loss long ago. I had given up on myself. Don't be like me. Or be like how I am now. I actually worked on a cover of a book, kind of with that theme. I'm very nervous about it. I will see you next time. God willing, in the creek don't rise. Stay safe. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer. Total, not net. It's not on page four. Link below. Don't eat it. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you've had enough. Be patient and persevere. Thanks. Ciao, Bella.